Art. It's a form of storytelling that Ricardo Levens Morales has been passionate about since he was a kid in Puerto Rico. For Ricardo, social justice art is a form of healing. Social justice art, to me, are the nutrients that the communal immune system needs in order to be able to fight off the toxins. And those are the stories that prevent people from feeling powerful, from feeling good about themselves, um, that prevent them from being clear about what needs to happen. So social justice art is really a, bo a boost to people's natural capacity to be powerful. As an artist, my role is to pay attention, to listen to the patient, listen to the community, and be able to figure out in dialogue with the community what are the stories that are needed at a given moment to help that community be a powerful community, a vibrant community, a community that supports the, um, the creativity of the people within it. How do you get people to stop, look, think, ask, research, learn. Um, art is a great way to start that process, but the best social movements are those that really engage the whole person, the, the heart as well as the mind, uh, the body as well as the spirit. And, and I think that art is a great way to do that, and I think that Ricardo's art has been particularly effective at doing that. Ricardo wants to affect positive change, and he believes that that change comes through empowerment of groups of people working together. We're a union of workers, and we needed a logo that showed human beings and the work that they do. And Ricardo's process was to talk with people about the kind of work they do and how it helps create a better Minnesota. And after having a very long conversation with workers, Ricardo started drafting a star inside of which every member of our union could see themselves and the work that they do. And it took on a human face and it took on the caring face of our union. Well, my art always, has always grown up in, as part of community. And just like as though I were cooking for a community, I want to make the food that's good for people, that's healthy. And if somebody offered me money to feed people poisons or toxins, or just lots of sugar and fat, that would not be satisfying. So likewise, as an artist, I'm not tempted to um, get look for work that's going to be creating advertisements for selling products that I don't believe in or that don't really enhance people's lives. Well, I'm asked sometimes whether I think of myself as an artist primarily or as an organizer. And I guess I'd have to say more of as an organizer or a change agent. So that if for some reason I was no longer able to do art that was healthy for the community, art, social justice art, I wouldn't be looking around to, to ask, what kind of art will I do instead? The question I would ask is, what would I do instead to promote social justice? This design is about worker rights, civil rights, and human rights. And we requested this design in order to defeat the constitutional amendments that were on the ballot in 2012. There aren't a lot of unions that have an identity. My union, because of Ricardo's help, has a visual identity of who we are and what we fight for. What's unique about this is you see the crowd here. This person has been interpreted in many ways. Some people see him holding a lunchbox. Others see him holding a briefcase. Others see him holding a purse. No matter what he's holding, no matter how you see that design, it works for us. He is not just a businessman. Ricardo is an organizer, and organizers are about relationships. And when you have a relationship with Ricardo, you have a relationship with all of his causes and all of his clients. And it's a powerful thing to feel like you're not alone in your struggles. I grew up in rural Puerto Rico, and my family was involved in supporting the Movement for Independence for Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. colony. And I think what I learned from that, what I got from that, was a sense that the world out there is not something distant. It's something that I can have a relationship with that individuals can have an influence on. And so I've always, my art, as I began developing it, was always in connection with things that was going on. I, when we moved to the States, that was a time of great activism, of great um, turmoil. And so the artwork I created was reflecting that. 
just like the artwork I created as a child on the farm reflected same trees and birds and chickens. Everybody, when he saw these images, I believe he become emotional and then he will join to us. It helps us by the time we're standing inside of the Capitol building because all the legislators, when they see these images or we are holding the posters, without asking us, we, they know what we need. Uh, they know why we gather it, why we're holding these posters what do we want, where we come, where we going, so they can understand all these things, I think. Ricardo is not only an artist, he's an organizer, leader, activist, and educator. He doesn't measure the success of his studio in South Minneapolis by how many clients he has or how much he sells. He measures success by the way his art is used, being exchanged between people, used by organizations and campaigns and newsletters, displayed around workplaces and schools. I create art for the people I love. As I gain more experience, as I work in more communities and more organizing experience, that circle becomes bigger and bigger. So my hope for organizing and for, for you know, what I call cultural organizing, you know, social justice art, is that the boundaries between art, organizing, creativity, humor, um, simply become blurred. I mean, in my life they are. I really can't really define the boundaries between my role as an educator as an artist, as an organizer anymore. And I think it's in those meeting places, those intersections, that people's real creative power can emerge.